Hello, everyone. We are very excited to hop on the Facebook Live here on the Gen X Dairy page. Um, we're going to discuss some of the updates that everyone was able to see here with this week's proof run. Um, so we're just um, finishing up an exciting week of all new bull information with the Tuesday proofs that came out. Um, and on the Gen X side, we're really excited to share with all of you some updates that we were able to make within the Gen X um, Proprietary Index, ICC. Um, so with that, I'll go ahead and introduce myself. I'm Leah James. I am the Dairy Marketing Manager with Gen X. Um, and we're going to have a really um, laid back Q&A here um, with another expert on the ICC updates here. We've got a long-term Gen X employee in Scott Carson um, joining as well. He has wore a lot of hats at Gen X. He's um, done everything from buying bulls um, to boots on the ground and managing strategic team now um, most recently. So he brings a lot of expertise to the table. So I'll throw it at him and he can introduce himself and then we'll kind of jump into um, both proof highlights as well as ICC updates. Um, so Scott, go ahead and introduce yourself. Thanks, Leah. I'm Scott Carson. I um, I was part of the procurement team, uh, the the, uh, the bull acquisition team for almost ten years. I managed that team for the last three years. I was on that, and then I moved to our Gen X Plus team about two years ago. And now I work with our consultant group on the East Coast, to helping our largest member herds achieve their reproductive and genetic goals. Excellent. Well, we're really excited to have you join us, Scott. Um, and I will just preference that we certainly want this to be interactive. Um, so as we're kind of talking through the updates that Gen X saw on our dairy genetic line here, feel free to throw your questions in the chat. Um, we'll answer those questions live um, as we get them and as they filter through. Um, we certainly will have a lot of time at the end that we can also um, ask question, or answer questions on ICC updates, um, but also proof related. If there's any questions that you have that you want to throw at us um, related to the proof that happened on Tuesday, feel free to drop those in the chat as well. So um, with that, um, we are going to jump into the ICC updates. Um, so just a little bit of history, um, if you're not familiar, um, Gen X is home to the ICC index, um, and that is a proprietary index that we publish um, for all of our Holstein and Jersey sires. Um, and it really um, came to tuition a few years back. I think 2014 was when ICC went live for us. Um, and it was really driven by a grassroots effort on behalf of our members and customers. Um, they really wanted a better way to sort their genetics. Um, they wanted to be able to really hone in on kind of that sustainable, problem-free, moderate-sized cow. Um, and they really wanted a better sort tool um, in the form of an index to do that. Um, so with that request, Gen X was kind of a leader in the industry in kind of our answer and said, let's put together a formula that really does just that and really focused on, focuses on that sustainability, um, that efficiency aspect. Um, and so that's how ICC came to tuition. Um, and we've been excited on, on the Gen X side that we've been able to be really nimble and adjust ICC as our members and customers have needed it to be changed from their vantage points. Um, and with that, we saw some um, updates here on Tuesday with the ICC index that we're really going to jump into um, and dig into. Um, and with that, I'm going to throw it over to Scott, and we'll, ha we'll have a little discussion on Holstein ICC first. Um, so we'll talk about what has changed within Holstein ICC. Um, and we'll give you a graphic that can really decipher the, the sub-indexes that make up ICC. Um, so Scott, why don't you take it away and just, just talk a little bit about um, how it came to tuition, um, the changes that we're, we're seeing here now with the updates made on ICC on the Holstein side. Sure. Well, the, uh, the, the real key aspect of and the trigger point that, that inspired us to update ICC was that the new feed save trait became available. Uh, that was first introduced in December, 
and we wanted to immediately incorporate that into ICC. That's that's the beauty of ICC. We we have control of it, and we can make updates to uh, to reflect what our members need. And what our members want is the most uh, economically efficient and sustainable cow that they can have. Um, feed saved is a uh, is a unique trait and we really wanted to incorporate it immediately because it doesn't have a direct correlation to any of the other economic traits that, uh, that we select for. So we've got, um, um, you know, milk yield, productive life, uh, livability, DPR, none of those traits have any direct correlation to feed saved. So we wanted to incorporate that immediately in, into ICC so that we could begin selecting for productive cows who are also feed efficient. Uh, the feed save trait itself has two different traits that that, uh, that make it up. There's a body weight composite, which is pretty reliable, and it uh, it utilizes our knowledge of frame traits. Um, and what we've learned through research is that we were underestimating the impact of those body weight composite on feed efficiency. And uh, the second component is residual feed intake, which is uh, the actual measurement of everything the cow is consuming all of the product that she's making, uh, milk, fat, and protein, and the uh, changes in her body size and weight. So that's uh, that's the real uh, hard science, the, the really impactful part of, of feed saved, but it's less reliable because the research is so difficult to come up with. In ICC, we didn't use um, the same ratio of, of body weight composite and residual feed intake that's in the actual feed save trait, we put a little more pressure on body weight composite because it's more reliable. Um, and that's that's the, uh, the the major change that we made. So by by doing all of that, uh, we, we adjusted the uh, the index a little bit. 54% uh, goes into pr production efficiency, and that's equally, almost equally weighted between fat, protein, and, and uh, our two feed save traits. And there's also a, a fraction of milk included in that. Uh, sustainability is uh, has been simplified a little bit. It's uh, it's still primarily productive life. It uh, utilizes all of the new um, CDCB traits: uh, metratus, di displaced abomasum, uh, retained placenta. There are a couple others, and and fertility has been simplified. It's only DPR and HCR. The correlation between DPR and CCR is so high. We didn't really need to have a, a, an individual waiting for CCR. Um, the other change that we made, and we, because of the the huge re-ranking that's uh, th that's been created by the introduction of feed saved into the index, we took advantage of this uh, this point in time to simplify it. Uh, you'll notice that we don't have a, a calving ability trait any longer, or a cal calving ability sub index any longer. Uh, we, we felt that it was uh, reasonable to remove that. Most of our members already use a, an independent culling threshold for, for um, sire calving ease, so we removed sire calving ease from, from the index. Uh, we used to have a number of small um, traits from Canada included in the index. They were, it was great data, but it made it impossible for us to get um, ICCs for uh, our, mem our members' female population. So by removing those Canadian traits, we're now going to be able to calculate ICCs for our for the females in our member herds. So that's a really big bonus to the changes that we made to uh, to ICC this time around. Um, how am I doing, Leah? I think you're nailing it. I think that really um, simplifies and kind of gives a really 360 view of the updates that we've been making um, here for Holstein ICC. And now a question a lot of our members and question, uh, members and customers have is what kind of validation um, happened through the process of these iterations and these updates? Um, maybe you can kind of speak a little bit to that, Scott, being part of the, the formulation um, committee um, that really honed in um, and made these updates. I know that they're supported by the peak research um, and development team. Um, so just speak a little bit to, yeah, some of the validation that we went through to make these updates within the index. Yeah, so we uh, we take the same uh, economic approach to building ICC that uh, the CDCB uses in the construction of net merit. So we uh, everything is validated in, in exactly the same way. Um, we just uh, we just tweak the uh, the traits a little bit to, uh, to to better reflect the priorities of our members. 
Uh, even net merit has some type components to it that uh, we just don't feel are, are impactful for our members. So this, uh, this graph shows the selection response. We wanted to continue to drive uh, reproductive traits. So you'll see that uh, ICC uh, beats uh, uh, both net merit and TPI significantly on reproductive traits. We also wanted to really hammer our emphasis on feed save because that's such a huge, a, a trait of such huge economic impact. So you can see our update to ICC really pushes feed saved and will allow our members to maximize feed efficiency of their cows. And at the same time, we're really not compromising on yield traits. We're not compromising on productive life. We're not, not compromising on anything. Uh, we're just pushing efficiency of the cows that are, that are selected through the use of the ICC index. Um, we, a, uh, a, a key thing that we, that we removed, and this was intentional, we removed utter composite from the index. And that's, uh, there, are, there are two things happening here. One is that the Holstein population is already very uniform. We don't see uh, bad uttered young cows in herds, except for extreme situations. So, uh, so we don't feel there's a need to continue to push utter composite aggressively, uh, just because the population is already very uniform. If we've got, um, got uh, linear bar graphs on our bulls that are, that are near zero or slightly positive, we're maintaining the, the herd and maintaining confirmation in the herd. Um, and the second aspect is the peak product development just simply isn't going to give us uh, bulls that are gonna, going, to, um, going to transmit poor utter traits. They're not gonna make bulls that are like that. And even if they do during the draft process, we're not going to select them. So uh, our composite is taken care of all by itself. We, we wanted to take some of that, uh, some of the weighting from that and really uh, emphasize other traits that are of primary economic importance. The, uh, the two unique things that we, that we added in and put extra emphasis on because of what our, our members and customers are telling us are uh, rear teat placement and teat length. Uh, those are the real pain points for anybody who's milking cows for a living right now. Uh, rear teat placement has gotten too close. We see too many cows with crossed rear teats and, and teat length is getting too short. There are too many cows that are hard to milk just because their teats are too short. So rather than uh, selecting for a median optimum, uh, we've, uh, we're selecting for, we're, we're maximizing the advantage of, of bulls that transmit wider teats, maximizing the advantage of bulls that transmit longer teats. So we're, we're taking the most aggressive step of any index in the, in the industry to try, to try to reverse that trend toward closer teats and shorter teats. Um, what else should I touch on here, Leah? I was gonna say, um, on the discussion of the, the, the pain points at the farm level, I mean, that speaks really well to our robotic customers as well, obviously. Um, you know, in uh, those setups, we really need to focus on the ideal teat size and placement so that those rob robots can pick up, um, you know, the, the, the attachments. So I think that is another key point, too, is that, you know, the updates made within ICC are um, ultra robot friendly in that regards as well, um, based upon what we're seeing at the farm or field level, absolutely. So um, I think you um, summed it up extremely well, Scott. I know that was a lot of information in a short period of time. Um, so I would go ahead and encourage people if they've got some questions, um, please do drop them in the chat. We'd be happy to address those questions related to the ICC updates. But once again, here, um, we're gonna jump into some changes on the Jersey side as well. Um, so give some thought to what we kind of just covered on the Holstein side. We'll preference a few changes to the Jersey side. Um, they've been pretty uh, minor com in comparison. Um, so Jersey really, um, while we were at, um, at it updating Holstein ICC, it provided us a really neat opportunity to go in and make some iterations to Jersey ICC as well. Um, and so here's kind of the really quick breakdown um, for Jersey ICC. Um, you'll see that cheese maximizer is that production efficient, efficiency sub-index there. That carries the highest or most weight within the index. That comes in at 44%. Um, and that would be equal weightings of both fat and protein um, that, that feed into that, that sub-indexes. 
Um, sustainability is where we made a few tweaks on the Jersey side. Um, we went ahead and modeled what we did on the Holstein ICC on the Jersey side, and we were able to put in some of those transition metabolic traits into sustainability. So that would be an update within that sustainability sub-index at that 36% weight. Um, and then finally, um, fertility makes up the rest of the Jersey ICC. Um, and a change this time around is really within fertility um, to hone in on heifer fertility. Um, you talked about, Scott, pain points at the farm level. From a Jersey vantage point, heifer fertility is a pain point. Um, so you'll see within the fertility side on the Jersey inclusion of that heifer conception rate as well. Um, and as well as age at first calving. Those would be two traits that feed into that fertility that really address that, once again, that pain point at the farm level um, in that heifer fertility as well. Um, so that would be the updates on the Jersey side. Um, once again, if you have some questions, um, feel free to throw them our way. Um, and I think we can get them up on the screen for people to see as well. Um, anything to add on the Jersey side um, as far as updates, Scott? Oh, a uh, couple of things. Uh, we don't have feed efficiency for Jerseys yet. There just hasn't been any research or not enough research to have uh, a valid trait available. So that's why feed efficiency isn't part of Jersey ICC. You'll also notice that uh, our emphasis on fertility in Jerseys is 20%, which is 8% higher than in Holsteins because that's really the uh, the the issue that the Jersey population has right now is they're moving backwards on fertility traits. Mm -hmm. the, the, uh, the base change actually went in the wrong direction. So we really want to push that for our members and customers. That's, that's the thing that they're most concerned about. Sure, absolutely. Yes. And um, fertility is something that the Jersey breed doesn't want to lose um, in that regards because it's a stronghold for them and um, pushes their efficiency. So yes, we wanted to be ultra conscious of that to try to progress um, the genetic selection as well. Um, I do see a couple questions that did um, feed in, and, and I think we'll get these up on the screen for you as well. Um, Anne is asking, um, Scott, um, did I hear correctly that ICC values will be available on females? We will be able to calculate ICCs for our member herds. Yes, we will. It'll be part of our sortgate program. It'll be, I'm, I'm not sure how deep it's going to go into our our um, value-added programs, but we'll be able to do that for females. Yeah, and I think that's a really um, great point to um, point out for our members and customers. I think that you know our members and customers are sorting on ICC, um, and so having the option to use ICC on females really completes kind of that ICC story. You really can hone in on that genetic selection when you're doing it both on the sire as well as the maternal side. Um, so we're pretty excited to fold that um, within the value added programs. Um, another question for you, Scott. Sophie asks, can you explain a little bit more about the specific weighting of feed saved within production efficiency? Okay, so once again, we didn't actually use the feed saved trait. We used the two components of feed saved. So body weight composite is part of it, and that's the more reliable part. And residual feed intake is the second part. So the combined weighting of those two traits is essentially the same weight as the weighting for protein and the weighting for fat. So we've, um, the uh, production efficiency sub-index is essentially three equal parts, feed efficiency, protein, and fat. And, and I'm lumping milk in with protein because they drive each other. Um, we, we do have a weighting for milk, but it's, it, I, it's a small weighting and it, and it really um, just contributes to the protein weighting. Um, we've, we've put more weight on body weight composite in our feed efficiency than, than what the actual feed save trait does. So we've got about, um, what's, what's the actual weighting? About three quarters of the weight is on body weight composite and one quarter of the weight, of the weight on residual feed intake. So to, I, I think that uh, pretty well Summarizes. Yeah, I think that perfectly answers that question, but um, a dove question, dovetail question off of that, Scott, maybe you can speak a little bit to how ICC stacks up against, yeah, industry indexes in inclusion of that feed efficiency proxy. 
Um, um, you, you alluded to it with a you know genetic response slide, but maybe speak you know how comparatively you know feed efficiency within ICC stacks up against lifetime net merit TPI. Well, we're we're just taking a giant step forward, much more much more quickly and aggressively than net merit or TPI. TPI has incorporated some of the feed saved science into TPI, but they still have a, a, a high um, weighting on PTAT. PTAT just drives frame traits up, and that's, that's the one thing that is significantly negatively correlated to feed save. So TPI just isn't going to deliver feed efficiency as part of their index. Net merit hasn't incorporated it yet. So there's, there's no emphasis on feed saved within net merit. And like I said, there's no correlation between feed saved and the other key economic traits. It's not that they're negatively correlated, they just aren't correlated. So we have to select specifically for feed saved in order to gain on feed saved. Sure, sure, absolutely. Um, uh, uh, question came into the chat and I think it hones in really well with the discussion at hand. And it says, is Pendulum available in Sext? Um, and I'm gonna have to double check and get back to you uh, on that, Eric. Um, but it's a good point to bring up the bull pendulum. So he is actually the leader uh, on the Gen X side for ICC. Um, he slots in at 12 at 22 ICC, um, and he does it by a lot of his feed save attributes. Um, so if you look at his feed saved value, um, he's coming in at a positive 274. So um, that's a pretty significant number, right, Scott, if you're looking at it from like a boots on the ground, I'm a farmer, what does that number mean to me? That's a that's kind of a dollars and cents number, right, Scott? It, it sure is. The literal interpretation of the feed saved trait is pounds of dry matter saved per lactation. So a pendulum daughter is going to eat 274 fewer pounds of dry matter during her lactation, that's almost a pound a day. So think of it this way, over time, we're going to be able to, uh, to make the same amount of milk or more milk because we're, we're continuing to select for increased milk production and feed, feed the whole herd a pound less dry matter each day than what, what you're doing today. And a decade from now, maybe two or three fewer pounds per day to make even more milk than you're making today. Sure, absolutely. Um, and that brings up a good point. If anyone has um, proof related questions, um, specific bull questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. Um, I will get back to you, Eric, if he is available sex. Some of them will vary on product availability, obviously, um, but we'll make a point to get back to you as well. Um, and if you are watching, please drop a comment on the chat as well. Um, we'll find some prizes and some Gen X swag for those that took a chance to watch here this morning as well. Um, so just say hi too if you don't have a question and then we'll get everybody in a drawing to um, do some giveaways as well. Um, is there anything uh, bull related or proof related that you that excited you this week, Scott, kind of on the proof highlight side of things? Oh, I'm just really thrilled with the, the, the added depth to our lineup. We, we added a ton of, uh, of bulls that say are exactly what our members and customers are looking for, and, and they went to the top of our lineup. So the, the average genetic ability of, our, of the Gen X uh, portfolio of bulls is, is as strong now as it's been in years. And I'm really excited to work with, with my members and, and build new gene pools and really show improvements that across the board and all of the traits that we're selecting for. We've got the opportunity to really make giant strides forward by using teams of bulls that are superior to anything we've had available in a long time. Sure, absolutely. And I know um, if you go back a few years, you're kind of a Jersey guy by trade, Scott, right? Uh, you used to I used to be. <laughs> I, I, I milked jerseys for a long time. Yes, um, I don't know how much uh, um, you get in the East for Jersey po pockets or populations where we were chatting a little earlier. There's not as heavy of Jersey presence out there, but is there any any Jersey highlights that excite you at all um, in regards to things? Well, I think you had uh, you had looked at them more closely than I had. I know Razor Sharp and Enlight are, are industry leaders. We've, uh, you know, we took a hit uh, in, April of 2019, when the Jersey industry was kind of flipped on its head, and we've and the Peak Product Development Group have done a spectacular job of pivoting 
and and uh, and rebuilding the power in our our Jersey lineup. So I think that's to me that's the key takeaway. We've got a broad group of really impressive young Jersey Bulls and and plenty of seamen, generally speaking. I was I was just gonna say I think the the great point on the Jersey side is that we've got a great availability, particularly on the Gen Choice um, side of things. Um, so I would actually use this opportunity to make sure that um, people are aware that we've got the Gen X full search app available um, and you can sort by product line availability within that as well. Um, so if there is specific questions on Gen Choice, um, that would be a start point. Um, we'll certainly follow up as well if we get inquiries. Um, but that bull search app also provides fertility on our bulls as well. Um, so make sure you're paying attention to that. You're, we have preg check and preg check plus values for both our conventional and our sex product line. Um, so that's a great sort tool as well. Um, and you will see an update on our website with all of the proof changes as well. So as you're kind of deciphering and sorting through everything, on the proof highlight side, make sure you're using both our web uh, website as well as um, the bull search app to kind of start those um, sorts. Let's see, I think a few more questions in the chat. Um, oh, Abby did um, clarify the pendulum is um, not yet available in the US and Canada, um, but he is available in other countries, um, is soon to be available domestically as well. Um, Tyrone asked, do you have a bull making exciting high outliers, outlying calves? Do you know off the top of your head, Scott, what's hitting well, on? I, I was just going to check Pendulum's birth date because I bet he's probably got sons and daughters hitting the ground really soon. So uh, any, all of these really high bulls that we've just activated were probably making semen when they were about eight months old. And, sure. and they'll be they'll be the sires of the next generation. Um, we've you know, people are probably some people are familiar with the bull Alta Zazzle. We're adding Alta Zazzle sons to our lineup right now, and he's uh, you know they're they're 16, 18 months old. They're making semen, and their dad is only uh, 24 months old. That's that's how fast things are moving. Yeah, but the genetic progression of things in 2021 is just flabbergasting compared to even five years ago, I think on that front, it's pretty amazing how you can um, make the progress that we're able to make as well. So um, with that, I think we answered the questions that came through. Um, if we didn't, we certainly will make a point to in the chat as well. Um, like I mentioned, if you're watching, please just drop a comment, say hi, um, we'll find some prizes for those um, that took the time to do that. Um, and um, like I mentioned earlier, all the proof related information as well as the ICC updates can be found on the GenX website. Um, so take a peek there. Um, and if you have additional questions, please feel free to reach out to any of us. We're happy um, to um, answer those. Scott, I want to take the um, time to thank you for hopping on here this morning. Um, and thank you for your involvement in all of the ICC changes. Um, if we get some more specific questions, I'll throw them your way, certainly, um, as they kind of feed in here. So with that, I will um, thank everyone for taking the time once again. Um, we certainly appreciate it. We're very excited with the depth of our lineup, as Scott said earlier, on both the whole scene and the Jersey side. Um, so please um, take a take a minute and check out all of the new um, things that Gen X has to offer, both within ICC um, as well as all the new bowls that are um, hitting here after proof this week. So thanks so much, everyone. Um, with that, um, stay well and enjoy the weekend. Thanks, Scott. Thanks for having me. There was there was one more question. Margarita was looking for some more specific data. We'll make sure she gets that. Okay, perfect. Excellent. Sounds Thanks. good. Have a yes. great weekend. Take care. Bye.